So here we are again. I'm, I'm trying to uh, decide whether to run off with three and four different ideas each time, or maybe this time uh, just basically stick with one fundamental question and then move to another one. Let, I'm told more, it's more common these days for attention spans to last 10 or 12 minutes or so. So uh, I think I'm going to try to uh, limit it to one point, but I have to make a couple other points in the meantime. <laughs> and one is just a response to, uh, to uh, something I said a couple times ago. Um, I think I'm supposed to refer to these by number, but I actually can't remember which number it was. This is number six. So somewhere a couple times ago, maybe number four, I was talking about the difference between sight size and uh, visual order type seeing. And uh, uh, someone responded, having seen my drawing video, uh, which is called Drawing in the Visual Order, and uh, which is a, a fairly adequate uh, uh, um, presentation of the kind of approach I take to this stuff. It's, it's all over the place at once, a uh, classic sort of impressionist thing, but it's about articulating what you see and not a bunch of understructure and other kinds of, you know, like construction drawing, things like that. But it's also not from, based on pre-measuring. Uh, apart from one choice, you make a decision about how big you're going to make something. For example, if you're doing a portrait head, which I was in that, I made a decision to make the head such and such a number of inches so it would fit on the page, and I chose where to put it on the page. But uh, anyway, in that uh, way, um, uh, Kevin responding, uh, said he was working on, had, had watched the video and was working on, on uh, incorporating um, exclusively for a while at least the, um, the visual methods, what I call the, the visual order methods, and uh, not doing sight size. Um, and I just wanted to make a single point, and that is that you know, when you're looking at what people call comparative or relational, one of the things that's really necessary is for you to make marks that are actually expressive of something. In other words, much like the Italian draftsman, uh, think of Raphael, for example, but or Degas, watch him draw a line with the actual look of nature, like a memorized line, and use that as one of his points. And uh, that's the one thing that I may want to reinforce with someone who's really trying hard to draw uh, in the visual order, or even to think in the visual order way of working, it's expected that there's a certain amount of truth and um, and uh, in the in the likeness of your first marks. And when it's just a shape mark, uh, then you'd be doing what Sargent suggests, and that is draw as long a line as you can actually memorize. And this is so different, of course, from the con construction method, and it's also different uh, now from the sight size method in that you're not measuring first. You do this placement of the top and bottom, so you choose the chin, say, and the top of the head. But then your job is to go out there and do some width things and then start associating. You put something down, uh, and you immediately correct to your first two points, and uh, but put it out there and look, and let your eyes do all the work. Let your eyes um, have an idea. You get an idea by watching, by looking, by looking at relationships, and, then, and that's the whole comparative mindset. And then you, uh, and then you adjust. You immediately adjust. So, uh, you know, and, and by the time you've done that, perhaps three times with any particular mark, you'll have it in the right place. But you don't, as a young student, especially, you don't take an attitude about that. You know, make it as like as you can the first time, the Bonat rule, and then make it more like applying to these points with which you're researching, with your scouting out the sort of the setup. So enjoy that anyway, and I. <laughs> And I don't, I won't make more of it now, but I'm eager to hear other more particular questions as people play around with the uh, visual order uh, way of working. I think you're going to find it surprisingly efficient uh, and, uh, you know, less time consuming. And, and um, you know, there's a question that comes up and I, somebody asked me questions later, but I want to mention the idea of neural exhaustion, you know. The more like you make it the first time, <laughs> and by the way, the, the more energy you put into important things when you're first going through, the fresher you are. And every picture, every drawing, no matter what you're working on, every one of them has a, what I call a, um, um, like a, um, um, what was that, the Ever Ready uh, Bunny or something? <laughs> I'm forgetting which one it was. But it has a certain uh, lifespan your energy levels just start sinking and sinking. And so you want to have worked on very important things. And I'll talk, I'll address that in the main question today, which I guess I should do now. Uh, let me give you the question. Uh, it says, oh, uh, 
And this person seemed surprised that there'll be a chance to ask more questions. So please do take advantage of the uh, comments portion. I, I'm looking at those things and you guys today, all you guys, Kevin and this is uh, Gabriel, are coming out of that thing. I'm also getting, in, getting some discussion in other locations, uh, including my studio uh, in, um, in Lawrence, uh, Mass. So here's the first question, will there be a chance to ask more questions? And the answer is yes. And then, uh, and then this person said, I would love to hear Paul talking about how Gamel, how the Gamel School and later Lac Atelier relates to the work Frank Riley did on teaching and Ted Seth Jacobs. You know, so, you know, you're talking to somebody who was at the Art Students League actually when Ted Seth Jacobs was working there. And um, it seems to me he was using something rather like the um, um, Riley method. Uh, I know that other people talk about it. Um, quite a few other people talk about the Riley method. Um, and admittedly, it's a sort of a curious, I say curious one. It's a, it's a very indirect method. Uh, it's based on, 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 on ideas that are non-visual. Uh, I mean, a visual in a sense, or they're, they're, they're deduced or uh, educed or whatever from the, from the content of the model, but they're not of the visual look right from the beginning. And I think that that's probably one of the most, the greatest distinctions. When you're working as an impressionist, like a Boston School painter does, um, you're actually working with the look of nature at all points, at all times. And again, I would suggest to you that there are times when a Raphael, for example, draws a circle for a head, and he draws a, another circle for the shoulder, a circle for a part of the arm, and, and, and sort of pulls them together. But, and that's, um, that's, done and yet he's also at other times drawing a long line and literally drawing the outline with floating uh, shapes that look like they're seen and so there's a difference there uh, what is the difference and when I mean uh, so the, the Riley method and so many of the others are based on the ideas uh, their ideas are based on illustration the need to invent a figure and whereas when you're studying like you're doing a portrait you don't have to invent the portrait. The portrait's sitting right in front of you. Its shapes are there. Its forms, its, all of its content is sitting there in front of you. So they serve two different purposes. And, um, you know, so the indirection, you know, the, the lack of getting right to the point and using the visual stuff right in front of you uh, has always escaped me. I mean, I did study in New York doing the construction method and, and uh, most everybody was basically full of this idea of sort of hacking out the... Uh, like in a very crude uh, stone wood sculpture, you know, sort of hacking out these big blocks and then trying to find the line inside those blocks as if they were marble carvers. Um, but I think the most significant difference uh, between the Boston School, and I haven't talked about Gamel yet, but between the Boston School and the way I work, uh, is that one is actually Impressionism. It's really painting what you see. And the other one is, even when they paint what they see, they're using a method that's actually better for painting out of your head, for making up figures, as an illustrator would do, or frequently does. So, uh, yeah, and I, as I said, I think you put an awful lot of energy into that preliminary work in all these other methods. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I also suggest maybe people look at Sargent's drawings, and I don't mean to suggest that they're fine, you know, I'm talking about the, the mural drawings, for example. Uh, not even the portraits. None of those things look like they're based on a, on a, 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 a heavily researched uh, hacking of underlying stuff. They look like they're basically, and it's his own comment, they're basically based on the searching out of the long line, drawing, memorizing a line, putting it down, and adjusting, and adjusting it to other lines and all that sort of thing. Now, well, let's go back for a second, because one of the things I've noticed in, uh, well, somebody brought up uh, uh, Jacob Collins, and I watched, I mean, I wasn't aware of what he does, uh, but I watched a video that he's working on uh, where he's showing his approach to figure drawing. And he does that. He does this crude blocking out, a little bit even cruder, of course, but similar rather to Harold Speed's approach that is somewhat obviously construction-based, or at least he, he's suggesting it is. It looks like it is. And, uh, and then finding the figure underneath that somehow. What's interesting about what he's doing and what, people may want to be aware of as, and if you're working from nature, is that the impressionist mind, even when you're just doing a figure, 
is all over the place at once. It's not just, you know, it's not just here and then there. So when you first do those marks, the preliminary ones, you're sort of trying to get, you know, about the big widths, the big angles and that sort of thing. You know, any construction drawing would be doing that. But then uh, in the demonstration that he shows, there's this, uh, what somebody calls window shading. There's this modeling of the top of the head, the front of the face, and he just creeps his modeling right down to the bottom of the toes. Classic sort of uh, uh, academic approach, actually, uh, even used by the Boston Museum uh, School. At least if the drawings that I've seen, including starts by Gamel, are examples of that. Uh, the difference being this, and it's quite a significant one, and that is that while both are sort of working from the outline, the Boston School painters are actually drawing the look of nature in the outline. They're actually doing an art fine articulate outline before they start pulling down the shade. And that's a big difference. And it's surprising that there aren't more people actually doing that and appreciating the outline for what it is when the whole point is the outline plus the modeling, you know. Uh, so uh, ah, just, those are just some rough comments. Uh, I didn't study, uh, I had no part except to have a couple students of LAC show up at my studio. I had no part of the LAC studio. And I don't know anything specific about it except from those people that, that whoever's asking this question might know better than me. Uh, and I don't know what kind of teaching was going on in between. I know at one point I heard Lack was complaining about one of his teachers that he had to fix whoever had studied with this other person. So who knows <laughs> uh, what a straight line there. It's very difficult to hire, you know, to have people work for you, to teach for you, and actually have them get across your, your uh, ideas in a way that's, that really brings across what you're trying to say, the larger picture that you're trying to um, uh, establish as a teacher. So I don't know much about that. Uh, that what he did, and uh, but what we did in the classroom with Gamel, we didn't do construction drawing. We drew we drew the shape as we saw it. Uh, that's what I did. That's what I did in front of Gamel. I drew the shape, the outline, exactly the way it looked, and I improved the outline. Uh, the difference was that we were using a site size. Uh, at least early on, I was using a site size. Um, model as passed on to me by one of the other students as you know under the direction of Gamel and uh, uh, but and I've been told that's been carried on unfortunately in my mind at least uh, in the lac atelier but but that really probably is the best way let's see if I've left anything out of here um uh, yeah, I think that the Frank Riley actually is probably the one thing you want to think about. It. That whole thing is differentiate between painting from life and painting out of your head. One of them, this idea of anything, searching out a figure. I mean, searching out a figure, you can use all kinds of interesting methods, including the you know little ovals and stuff, uh, like like Raphael does at times, or blocking in uh, like like Poussin blocking in uh, sort of irregular rectangles, you know, for. For, for legs and upper legs and, you know, torso pieces or any of those, you know, uh, as long as you can, as long as you find that useful and you can evolve your figure from that. But um, know that there's a difference and, uh, you know, the, the indirectness of it is what I, you know, I want to continually reemphasize that there's something about what we do as Boston School Impressionists that is trying to make it as like as you can the first time. The only part that's different in the sort of the in-between stage is that you'll see a lot of gaps. You'll see articulate shape, piece here, piece there, effects. And these effects are setting up these, the big abstraction and not a bunch of hack lines traveling through the, uh, through the uh, paper, which would be really problematical for a really beautiful cast drawing, for example. What you would definitely not want a bunch of those harsh charcoal marks traveling through the paper, and then, you know, uh, which, which would dirty up the part of the paper you might want your best light effect. So, but yeah, so, but again, when you're doing cast drawing, you're actually, again, in a sense, you're an impressionist, you're trying to paint from life exactly what you see. And if you're using that really beautiful white paper and trying to model up, um, you know, the look of light, uh, it matters. Well, and that, but I want to just I'll leave you with the last one. Somebody asked me if I was actually planning in the future to, um, I said something in, one of the, in the DVD that I was planning to de do a demonstration of either a pastel or a painting. And it's still in the works. I have one uh, demonstration done. You can see it online. It's called The Violinist. I think it's called, if you go to GBA Time Lapse on YouTube, you can watch that. And uh, it's a very fast, it's like 90 seconds. I made there maybe a four minute version of it out there. Uh, and you can get an idea of what I'm doing. But that one has already been shot, and we are trying to put that into a demonstration 
model where you could actually see, you know, put an hour or more into 40, you know, get, get, <laughs> get a 40 hour painting reduced to an hour or more, two hours, whatever. So it's actually a full blown demonstration. Don't know when we'll get to that, but I do have a plan to do a still life and including in pastel, I do them all the time. I just need to have cameras set up one of these days. I'm doing one tomorrow, as a matter of fact, with my students. So and this will be an oil painting demonstration of a, of a still life. So um, thank you very much. We'll see you again next time. Don't forget to uh, make comments, ask questions, um, uh, share, and, uh, and if you can, uh, subscribe. Much appreciated.